Saleki Atza, Eni Ta'a Deborah Miranda, Huno Sahim Tanok, Lakai Echtalin Al Papisi at Washington and Lee University. Ka Rikaki Ni Shalpa. Hello, I'm Deborah Miranda, Turtle Woman, and I'm a storyteller at Washington and Lee University. I give you my story in honor of National Poetry Month. This poem, called Indian Country, references several places in Seattle, as well as a small newspaper called Real Change, a social justice publication that allows homeless folks to purchase it at cost for 60 cents and then resell it on the street for a dollar. The poem is dedicated to J.T. Williams, a homeless First Nations carver living in Seattle who was shot and killed by a policeman in August 2010. Indian Country for J.T. Williams and all Indians living on the street. One, on Broadway or First Ave, on Capitol Hill or Pioneer Square, the Indians gather in doorways or benches or grassy bits of park. They sleep, sell real change, tell stories, carve little totem poles, share cigarettes, wait for the bars to open, wait for the shelters to open, for the soup kitchens to open, wait for the world to open. This is Indian country, potholed streets, Indian trails leading up and down steep, steep sidewalks, Indian graffiti, scars across the faces of men from old families of carvers and women from camp clans of basket weavers, all falling out of the American dream. They call me sister when I walk by. Sister, I'm a long ways from home. Sister, you look like my auntie. Sister, you got a spare smoke. Sister, take this, just a little gift. Sister, can I give you a blessing? Their breath smells like the bottles of beer from my childhood. Beautiful hair gone all spare and silver. Eyes vomiting the scary things about being Indian that I ran real hard to leave behind, tried to hide under the stink of my shame. If I say no, they wave me away with a shrug. If I give them money, they assure me they won't spend it on drink. If I stop to admire carvings or drawings or beadwork, they stand silent. They never say the word, bye. Just whatever you think is right, sister. I don't give as much as I might, Afraid mine could be the fatal dollar that keeps them out of the shelter or lands them in the morgue. I give enough to ease my conscience, get them through another hour. I know I'm feeding the meter on colonization, paying the rent on a parking space we should own, but I can't keep them safe. I can't keep them warm or clean or sober. I'm not a good sister. I'm not even a good Indian, and this isn't survival. Two. Another dead Indian on the street today, brother, another misunderstanding with a cop. He had a knife. He was a carver. He was Indian. He was alive. That's still a crime in this day and age. He was alive, sometimes just barely, half dead, brain-soaked in alcohol, but his fingers could still read wood. Today, he bled on the street. He bled on the street. He bled on the street. He bled out on the street, the curves of an old design spilling from his body. And when I heard, all I could do was cry. What's a few more tears, brother, in this land with all the marrow sucked out? Just the memory of your big, swollen hands, the words of a blessing slipping from your mouth on to the bowed, lost daughter head. All you had left to give the last time we met, and I shouldn't have, but I took it. Now I'll have to carry it with me the rest of my sorry-ass Indian life. Remember how hard you worked to recall the words. Remember you. Remember where the Indians gather. Wait on the downtown streets, in the parks, on the benches, by the market. Remember, I can't ever run away from this love.